<laughs> wait, what? Hey, this is the Haha, ha, Wait, What? podcast with Mandy Brooke. I'm an entertainer, content creator, and musician. You may know me from my song parodies and funny antics on Instagram and TikTok. On my podcast, we try to make sense of the confusing parts of life because literally we're all winging it and have no idea what we're doing. <laughs> and that's totally okay. So relax, grab a glass of wine, and let's chat. Hey, besties. I hope you're feeling positive and easy breezy today. If you've been watching my content and listening to my podcast, you'll know by now that I'm kind of a a woo-woo type of bitch. I don't really share that side of myself a lot, but it's come to my attention that people are actually very interested in my spiritual practice, and especially my paranormal stories, but I'll get to that later. And I've spoken about my spiritual practice um, on other podcasts before, but today I really want to dive deeper into what I do, how I do it, and how I've manifested some of my deepest desires. And I'll even lead you through a very quick guided meditation at the end. So I'm just going to dive right in. I've always been a very spiritual person, and I've always implemented certain practices in my life, but I didn't start a daily spiritual practice until after I separated from my ex-husband. I was in a state of just utter despair, and I was very lost. I had no idea what I was doing in my life, and I needed to lean into something, and that something was meditation. Now I know what you guys are thinking. Meditation. You're picturing some skinny bitch on a sunset beach with flawless hair, sitting cross-legged with absolutely no sand getting in her coochie. And it's this beautiful, peaceful experience. But fuck that. That's literally not what meditation is. And I'm here to tell you. But that's what I thought it was, too, especially when I first started. And I'd sit there and my mind would be racing. And I'd always complain to my yogi friend that I couldn't, quote, calm my mind enough to meditate. And that my meditation was, quote, cooking or listening to music. And I learned that that was my ego making excuses to not listen to my higher self. Because little did I know, she had a lot to fucking say. In June of 2022, I began working with a spiritual teacher. His name is Chandresh Bardwaj of the Leela Gurukul podcast, and I'll link his podcast down below in the show notes. It's definitely worth a listen, and he has a lot of guided meditations that are very helpful. I'd actually love to have him as a guest on my podcast if he'd ever be down. But I worked with him for a year, and he explained things to me in such a profound way that not only helped me understand meditation, but understand myself. And once I started implementing his spiritual guidance, shit started to pop the fuck off in my life, bitch. I went viral on the internet for the first time, and then multiple times after that, I grew my following and I started to travel for the first time. I met a crap ton of new friends, people that I've always wanted to meet I'm now friends with. I went to Italy twice, London, Switzerland, the French Riviera. I went to the Monaco Grand Prix with McLaren. And I was on the Today Show with Hoda and Jenna twice. And Khloe Kardashian reposted my content a couple times. And this happened in a year. In a year. The things that I've always wanted for my entire life began happening and manifesting right before my eyes. And I credit it solely to the spiritual practice that I committed myself to every single day. And through that practice, I began unburdening myself of the limiting beliefs that I had about success and money. And I was able to identify and let go of people, places, and ideas that were causing resistance to the life that I truly wanted. My meditations were really raw and honest and messy, and sometimes all I'd do was cry at my altar, and sometimes I'd have a transcendent experience, and sometimes nothing at all would happen. But the connecting factor through all of it was I was showing up for myself every single day and accepting myself as I was in that moment. And I feel like coming into a spiritual practice feeling super broken and sad honestly worked in my favor because when you hit rock bottom, you break open completely. You're so raw and you're so much more susceptible to transmuting your sadness into power. So before I get into the steps I take, I'm going to relay a metaphor that Sean Dresch taught me that completely changed the way that I saw meditation and allowed me to relax into my racing thoughts. So hopefully this helps you too. 
Imagine you're the conductor of a circus. You're walking into that big tent where the circus people are practicing. The trapeze artists are flying over your head without a net, and the elephants are going crazy, and the people are running around getting their costumes in order, and it's utter chaos, right? But the conductor is calm. He takes a seat in the middle of the ring and watches the chaos. See, the conductor understands the nature of the circus. He knows that this chaos is temporary, He also knows that the animal trainers are going to get the elephants in order, and he knows that the trapeze artists won't fall, but he observes, he watches, he listens. And that's what meditation is, at least at first, observing your thoughts without judgment, witnessing the circus of your mind. The more you purely witness your thoughts, the more you'll understand your thoughts. End my belly, because it just growled a lot. (laughs) It won't be such a screaming match inside of your head, and it sort of becomes a conversation. Like, you'll start to recognize the voice of your higher self, and your subconscious will start to reveal certain things. And sometimes those things are very unpleasant that will ultimately serve your growth, you know, like inner child trauma shit. And some are just utter nonsense, like catastrophic thoughts that come in and out, you know, oh, I'm not prepared for that job interview. Oh, he's going to break up with me. Uh, like I'm, I'm a terrible mom, like those types of things. And Chandresh told me to do this when those doom death thoughts come in. He said, sit back and ask yourself, is that so? Is that so? And your brain will want to do the death spiral again. But asking yourself over and over again, is that so? Will make you recognize that you're overthinking. Oh, I'm actually very prepared for that job interview. I read the entire manual. I'm fine. If he breaks up with me, it's whatever. My life will be okay. I'm a very good mom. I played with my kids today. I fed them. I was very present with them. I'm just purely overthinking. So I hope those tips give you a better understanding of meditation and what it actually means. Because we're not going to be those cross-legged sand coochie sunset bitches. We're the raw, messy, divine feminine crew, and we're here to spiritually level the fuck up. So here we go. I'm going to take you through what I do every single day in my spiritual practice step by step. But first, a word from my sponsors that make this podcast possible. And if you're serious about your skincare, you'll definitely listen to the first one. Herbal face food is the most potent anti-aging skincare product on the market, period. And I should know because I've been using it for months and I've literally been obsessed. Herbal face food isn't a magic potion. It's simply the best of plant science at work. No fillers, no chemicals, no BS. The powerful potent serum is packed with antioxidants that heal your skin at a cellular level from the outside in and addresses the top signs of aging in three days or less. I personally noticed a huge difference in my skin texture and the appearance of fine lines and wrinkles when I combined both the Serum 1 and the Cure to my routine. My skin tag on my neck actually fell off as well. It was gross, but amazing. So I definitely recommend. um, Click the link in my show notes and use code MANDYBROOK for 20% off your first order. Mandy with a Y, Brook with an E. Want to relax and take a literal chill pill? Love You 3 Lux Gummies has your back. Love You 3 Gummies are made with exclusive cannabinoid blends, including hemp-derived CBD, CBN, and Delta 8. They also include luxury ingredients dedicated to your physical health, like apple cider vinegar, collagen, hyaluronic acid, and vitamin D. I personally love the Beauty Sleep CBD product they offer, which has helped me sleep peacefully throughout the night. And if I'm partaking in the Delta 8 THC, the watermelon sugar is my ultimate go-to. So check out the link in my show notes and use code LOVEMANDY at checkout for free shipping. Okay, let's get into my daily spiritual practice and what you can do at home. So the very first thing I did with the guidance of Chandresh was to create an altar space for myself to meditate at. The space is very sacred to me. No one can touch anything on it. It's my battery charging station for my soul. (laughs) And the cool thing is you can customize your altar the way you like, but keep it simple. 
because the energy needs to be able to flow freely through it. You want to make a space that you're excited to be at, because if you're thrilled to be there, you're naturally inviting the positive energies that you want in your space. The first item that you can add to your altar is a bouquet of fresh flowers. So pretty. I love roses personally, but they can be anything, even if they're picked fresh from outside. The point is that they are fresh. See, the intention is everything. And when you intentionally make an effort to provide fresh flowers, you're showing respect to your sacred space and therefore honoring yourself. The second thing you can add is a candle or two or three. I love candles, but mainly have a candle that you light to show gratitude to your space. And the script when you light it can sound like this. I light this candle to honor my meditation space and to honor the energies surrounding me, known and unknown, that are aiding in my meditation. Your altar can be as simple as just having a candle and some fresh flowers, but if you want to add more, you can add at your discretion a religious figure or a deity that you honor. I personally have Christ and Mother Mary represented. I also have a statue of a tantric goddess that I'm working with as well, and I'm not going to get all into that because it's quite complicated, but do what feels right for you. The fourth item that you can add at your discretion is a picture of a deceased relative to honor your ancestors. Now, I wouldn't suggest doing this right away. It's only if you feel called to do it. But honoring your ancestors at your altar is very important, even if it's just a candle. And that's what I did at first. Um, When I first started meditating, I lit a candle to honor my ancestors, but I didn't have any photos. Until my Aunt Natalie started making herself very known in my meditations. <laughs> okay, this is going to sound really, really weird. But I never had the pleasure of meeting my great Aunt Natalie in person. And when I started getting really deep into meditation, I started seeing the face of a woman who I internally knew was my family. And I described her to my mom. And she said, oh, my gosh, that's your Aunt Natalie. And I asked my grandmother for a picture of her, and now she's placed on my altar. I was told that my Aunt Natalie was creative and the kindest woman in the world. Why am I crying? (laughs) And my mom said, no wonder she's coming to you. She would have loved you. So I followed my instinct, and now she has a very prominent place on my altar, as she should, because I think she's helping me a lot on the other side. You can also add a few other items too, like some crystals, religious relics that are significant to you. But like I said, keep it simple. You want the energy to flow. And a helpful tip, if you're making your altar in your bedroom, make sure the altar is not at the foot of your bed. You don't want your feet to be facing toward it if you can help it. It's a respect thing. I'm not sure of all the ins and outs of those details, but just keep that in mind. Okay, so you have your sacred space. It could literally be as simple as a candle and a flower, like I said, just don't overthink it. And I actually have an Amazon list of spiritual tools that I use for my altar and beyond. So I'll link that in my show notes if you want like good cushion recommendations or cute journals. So before I meditate, I normally light my candles and I sit in gratitude toward my space. I journal during this time as well, if I'm feeling called to, and I mostly list the things that I'm grateful for, the lovely opportunities and the feelings I'm having. Sometimes I journal about getting through tough emotions or mental blocks. Whatever you're feeling called to write, just write it. Then on the next page, I write out my manifestations. I don't do this every day, but I do it often enough to keep my frequency aligned with my desires, and I write them as if I'm already experiencing it. It's called scripting, and here's an example. It felt so calming sitting on my big front porch, watching the sunset on the mountains. I smelled the fresh air and heard the trickling of the creek against the woods. I have my own little piece of paradise here. I'm so excited to see my Netflix premiere, and I'm traveling to the UK next week to hit up a big red carpet. I even have the hottest date. He's so into me, and I feel a lot of passion in his masculine energy. My heart is so full of gratitude for this present moment. I'm aligned, passionate, creative, wealthy, and abundant in every possible way. Then, at the end of the passage, write, I affirm yes 
and then sign it. I do a little extra shit <laughs> and I drip some candle wax on the page to solidify and release it, but you can do what you want. The key is, though, to release your manifestation. Think of it like an Amazon order. When you order a dress on Amazon, you're not emailing them every day asking over and over and over again when it's coming. You just know it's going to show up soon. Some people like to do manifestations and some people like to set intentions. I love doing both. Both are perfectly fine. And you're probably asking, what the fuck's the difference between a manifestation and an intention? <laughs> and to me, I think of it like this. Manifestations are the visual things that you desire in your life. And intentions are the way you want to show up in your life, in work, in relationships. Chandresh taught me to use adjectives, descriptive words, to describe who you want to become. Those words could be aligned, abundant, focused, etc. And Chandresh gave me a very cool blueprint for an intention, and it goes as follows. I cultivate playfulness, creativity, and passion every day in every way possible. So ask yourself, what are your words? How do you want to show up in your life? If you don't know exactly what you want to see as in manifesting, maybe focus on what you want to feel and who you want to become. Then read those words before and after you meditate. And I promise you, you will start to become that sexy bad bitch that you always wanted to be. Okay, so you've set up your baddie altar, you lit your candles, you expressed gratitude for your space, you set your intention, whether internally or on paper, and now it's time to meditate, bitch. So sit up with your back straight. I personally lean against a pillow, but do whatever is comfortable, but make sure your back is straight. It keeps your chakras aligned and it allows the energy to flow. And if you can't sit on the floor, sitting on a chair with both of your feet on the ground is perfectly fine. I personally can't sit cross-legged because of my hips, so I just kind of prop my legs on some pillows on the ground. I kind of look like a frog. So frog it out, bitch. Now, if you don't mind, in my nice calming voice, I'm going to lead you through a few minutes of meditation. I'll be your guide. And don't worry, I won't bust out a fart joke or anything. Feel free to trust in my voice and know that you are safe. And pause this to get yourself in a space where you won't be interrupted, even if that place is your car. No need to get fancy. Now, close your eyes and breathe at your own pace. This little meditation will be focused on witnessing. Witnessing your thoughts, witnessing the sounds around you, and trusting the universe is leading you in the right direction. Breathe in through your nose and out your mouth. Easy and gently at your own pace. Your mind may be racing, and that's okay. Just watch those thoughts. Witness them as if they're a movie playing on a screen. Witness the sounds around you. What do you hear that is close to you? What do you hear that is far away? Be a witness to any pains or aches that your body is feeling right now. And begin setting your focus on your heart. 
you can even place your hand gently on your heart. And in a few moments, I will be saying some affirmations. Fully embrace them. Breathe gently. I am safe to walk my path. I accept myself as I am right now. I embrace the known and unknown, and I allow myself to not know all of the answers. I trust that the universe is leading me toward my purpose. Breathe in through your nose and out your mouth. Now stay in this state of witnessing for a few more moments without judgment of your thoughts. Just let them come. And when you feel ready, open your eyes. Gosh, that's like taking a Tide to Go stick on my soul. Oh, don't you feel so much more refreshed? <laughs> If you want more mini batty meditations, please let me know. I'd love to find a way to share them with you. I think that does it for this episode. I can easily talk about this for so many more hours, but I really want this episode to be digestible for you. So let me know if you want more. And if you loved this episode, please subscribe, rate and review it so it becomes more visible to besties like you. Until next time, be a fucking delight, betch.